I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Not for me, but with me. Let us, you and I, exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man, the woman that trusts in him. I am the Reverend William and Hamilton, the pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church here in Schenectady, New York. We welcome all members and guests on this, the third Sunday, August 2021. To Deacon Chair Odell Lovelace, to Deacon Chair Emeritus, Deacon Milton Evans, God bless you. To Lady Nicole, God bless you. To Sister Michelle Rodriguez and Julie Popo, God bless you. Those who lend voices here today, to Daughter Noel, come on, keep on singing to daughter jocelyn on percussions to brother zamami god bless you to deacon and training ronald popo who makes us makes you able to hear us god bless you let everything who has breath that has breath praise the lord gracious god we bless you gracious god we love you we thank you for this gathering we thank you for the gathering of the saints together and we will lift up our voices in praise unto you and everyone who love the lord said amen we come to praise and we come to praise and we come to praise him today that means you that means me that means all of us we come to praise his name Worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Oh, yes, he is. Of all the honor, of all the praise. Please come. Yes, he is. Lift him up, lift him up, lift the Savior up. God bless you, God bless you. 
Lift them in your living, lift them in your giving, in your praise, in your worship, in your prayer, in your service, in your study, in your devotion. Lift the Savior up. Amen. Amen. Our several announcements, our several announcements, as always, we solicit your prayers uh, for the sick and bereaved and those who are recovering among us. Uh, those who we may not know what they're going through continue to pray because we know that God answers prayer. We thank all those who met with us on Sunday school, our Zoom Sunday school this morning. God bless you uh, for participating, for learning, for teaching. God bless you. God bless you. We announced that on September 5th, September 5th, the first Sunday of September of this year, we will be worshiping. Friendship will be worshiping here in the sanctuary at 407 Union Street. We have met on Zoom. We have met on Facebook. We have uh, met on YouTube. We've met outside. September 5th, we will be meeting. We'll be joining. We'll be worshiping here. Going to have a great day in worship on September 5th. We hope to see you on that day. We will be observing social distancing. We will be wearing masks, but we will be worshiping the Lord. Also, we will be observing the Lord's Supper on that the first Sunday as well. We're looking forward to seeing you. It's been a while. It's been since March 2020. So I know there's some praise that's going to be going on in here because God truly has been good to the Friendship Baptist Church. For those who will not be able to join us for whatever reason, please continue to support Friendship to worship the Lord on our Facebook and, of course, our YouTube page. Amen. We're looking forward to seeing you on the first Sunday right here uh, at the Friendship Baptist Church. God bless you. For those who would like to be a financial blessing, uh, this is the time in which you may do so. To be a blessing. Bring your other tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Improve me and try me, says the Lord. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that you will not have room enough to receive it. For those who would be blessing the Friendship Baptist Church, Please go to our website, click the give prompt, and follow the short and simple directions. God bless you. We thank you for that gift, the generous gift in obedience and in love. To those who have given by way of check, please make your check out to the Friendship Baptist Church, 407 Union Street, Schenectady, New York. We're looking for that as well. We thank those who have been faithful givers to the Friendship Baptist Church while we were not meeting. God has been good. God has blessed you to give. And God has blessed what you have given. We give because we're blessed. We're blessed because we give. And therefore we find that we are never without. Gracious God, we bless you. We ask you to bless the offering that has been given in love and obedience. Bless the gift and every giver. Amen. He's so worthy. I know he's worthy. He's good. He's better than good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> give thanks. Give thanks. We give in thanksgiving. We thank him with our praise. We thank him with our worship. We thank him with our gifts. Thank you. Oh, yes, he is. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He is good. Yeah, yeah. Anybody know that the Lord is good? 
I want to hear some more than that. Amen. 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 What my pastor say, if you can't say amen, just look amen. Amen. We'll now have a song of sermonic preparation, and then we shall hear a word from the Lord. Amen, somebody. God's on your side. God's on your side. You're not in this alone. God's on your side. God's on your side. Hold on. Don't quit. You can handle it. God's on your side. 
If you were in this battle alone, you might as well just give up. But, but, but God's on your side. That means you already have the victory. The battle is fought, the victory is won. God's on your side. The record shows him to be undefeated. He's on your side. Conquered sin, death, and the grave. He's on your side. When he won, you won. God's on your side. Amen. Uh, my mother and your mother said, ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen. 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 We quickly move to the word of God. We're looking at Genesis. Genesis, the 50th chapter, the last chapter in Genesis. We're looking at Genesis 15 through 20. Genesis 15 through 20. And we will be reading from the NIV. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father, Jacob, was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for the wrong we did to him? Sounds like somebody feels guilty. Uh, so they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. So please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves. We are your servants, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Using as a subject what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. What the enemy meant for evil, what your enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. Amen, amen. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. When we look at this piece, we see Joseph has had a long life. It's near the end of his life. It's actually the last chapter of Genesis. We have Joseph, the honored son of Jacob. At the end of his celebrated and story life, he is and has been honored. He has been loved. He's been beloved. But when you look at Joseph, his, his life has not been a crystal staircase. Um, he was favored in the beginning. He celebrated at the end, but there's the, some things that happen in the middle uh, that, that would cause you to think that maybe life hasn't been that easy for Joseph. Right here, as far as we know, just taking a picture, a snapshot of this piece, Joseph's brothers initially hated Joseph. They despised him. They resented him. They purposed in their mind to kill Joseph. They had every intention to kill him, but ultimately the brothers sold Joseph into slavery. Fast forward, many years later, they had forgotten about Joseph. And at that time, the folks in Canaan where they lived uh, were undergoing a famine. And so to live and to survive, they had to go uh, to Egypt to find water, to find food. When they got to Egypt, guess who was there? They found their brother Joseph, whom they had sold into slavery. Now things had changed since they saw Joseph last because they had persecuted him. Uh, uh, they sold him into slavery. They were unkind to him. But now when they find Joseph, he was now the prime minister of Egypt, the second in command to Pharaoh. I just tells you one thing. You need to be careful how you treat people because life changes. You got to be careful. But Joseph, he didn't take revenge on his brother. Joseph welcomed his father 
and his brothers and their family and their flock and made provisions for them to live in safety there in Egypt under his protection and his authority. It's amazing that the one who they would not protect, who they wanted to kill, now protects them. Again, what a difference a day makes. Here in this chapter, the last chapter of Genesis, jo Jacob, the patriarch, Jacob, the father of Joseph, Jacob, the father of the brothers, dies. Of course, when a father dies, there's concern. But there's a different concern now. They have great cause for concern among the brothers. They're not mourning. They're not mourning. They're scared. In chapter 50, 15, they ask among themselves, with the passing of our father, will Joseph take revenge upon us? We hated him. We resented him. He knew we were going to kill him, but we sold him into slavery. His brothers were so corrupt that they made a profit on getting away or getting rid of their brother. That's a sense of selfishness I cannot comprehend. Will he take revenge on us for all the wrongs that we did to him? And they had reason to be afraid. Uh, you don't think he had reason to be afraid? Uh, did any of you all see Godfather 2? Godfather 2, Fredo, the brother of Michael, who was now the Don, betrays Michael. Fredo was in cahoots with Hyman Roth and cohorts with Johnny Ola. I don't expect an amen. And the friendship with Michael's enemy leads to an assassination attempt on Michael's life at his Lake Tahoe home. Michael finds out that Fredo betrayed him, and when he finds out, he pronounces, nothing happens to my brother as long as our mother is alive. I know Michelle Rodriguez loves the Godfather 1 and 2, and she won't turn 3 on for nothing. But in 2, at the end of the saga, end of the film, their mother dies. And then Michael takes his revenge by taking his brother's life. That's why I don't go fishing today. So Joseph's brothers have just one question. Will Joseph take his revenge out on us now that our father is dead? It leads us to another question, uh, Brother Popo. Did Joseph see Godfather too? It's a question. Joseph's brothers, believing that Joseph will take revenge, sends a message to Joseph saying, before our father died, and a lot of scholars believe that the brothers made this up. They said, before our father died, uh, he asked that you would forgive us, your brothers, for the wrongs we did against you. He asked you not to kill us uh, uh, as we had tried to kill you. He said uh, 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 he didn't want you to treat us like we treated you. Joseph receives the message and responds, am I God? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. Uh, Joseph infers what he said before. Although you sold me and sent me to Egypt, it, it was not your will, but God's will. It was, it was God's plan and God's purpose that I am here today. You might have made the travel arrangement, but God sent me here for a reason. And so they're looking at his brother kind of funny. What do you mean? You sold me for evil, but God allowed it to happen for his good and his glory. And then, although not written, he explains to his brothers, if you did not sell me into slavery, I would have never come to Egypt. 
if you had if I had never come into Egypt I never would have been sold into Potiphar's house if I never was sold in a Potiphar's house I never would have become the head and in charge of Potiphar's house if I never was in charge at Potiphar's house Potiphar's wife would not have accused me of a crime. If I was not accused of a crime, I would have never been put in prison. If I was never put in prison, I never would have met and interpreted the dreams of the Pharaoh's imprisoned butler. If I never had uh, interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh's imprisoned butler, I would have never met Pharaoh and interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. If I never had interpreted Pharaoh's dreams, I never would have made prime minister here in Egypt and in command of nations through the famine. If I never was in charge and saved nations in the famine, Egypt would starve to death. And when you and my father came from Canaan, you would not have found any food and we all would have died. I've been here for a purpose planned by God. It was a rocky road, but God made sure that I am here. What you meant for evil, God meant for good. God had his hand on me every turn. God's been good through slavery, through imprisonment. God has been taking good care of me. God has used Joseph's enemies to propel him to his divine destiny. You be careful what you curse in your life. God has some things for you that will only come through hard times and going through something. When we look at the Bible, we see God's done this before. He used a giant from Gath named Goliath to catapult David and elevate David to the throne of Israel and Judah. Goliath meant evil for David, but God meant it for good. God used a betrayal named Judas to set Jesus up. His work was to make sure that Jesus was captured, which led him to the cross. Judas meant it for evil, but God meant it for our good and for God's glory, that he would die for our sins, that we may have eternal life. If that didn't happen, it all would have been lost. He uses what others mean for evil for his good. In, 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 in your life, remember this. What God does not remove in your circumstance, he plans to use in your situation. What he does not remove, he's going to use it for your glory, for his glory, for your good. See, uh, uh, I know there's some saved folks here today that ain't never sinned, never done nothing wrong. I know they're watching on TV. Y'all should turn it up. You've never been betrayed. You've never been treated unfairly. You've never been betrayed by a loved one's friends, a confidant, an employer, a brother or a sister. You've never been betrayed and, and crossed up by a church member, choir member, pew member, confidant, or a friend of me. I know that's your story, but that's not everybody's story. To those who have been thrown under the bus, to those who have been hit by the train, for those who have been backed over by the truck and had a face that they recognized behind the steering wheel, I say to you, be not dismayed with air be tied. God will take care of you. What, what, what they meant for evil, God meant for good. You've been hurt, you've been betrayed, you've been sabotaged, you've been stand, stabbed in the back. You've been stabbed in the front. God still meant it for good. Plots and lies, hatred, setups, rebuff, ridicule, second guess, third guess, fourth guess, fifth guess. What God means is that it works for your good and his glory. They will talk about you on the job. Uh, when you put in the application and showed up, they talked about you. I don't want him or her working here. When you got the job, they talked about you. I don't know if I could trust them. 
uh, when you left the job, they say, I never liked them anyway. They will talk about you on the job. They will tell your supervisor that you do everything wrong. Your supervisor hears that and believes what they're saying about you. The supervisor comes in and evaluates and scrutinizes your work and finds out that you're not doing everything wrong, but you're doing everything right. Your supervisor later on promotes you, and now the people who talked about you have to report to you because what they meant for evil, God meant for good. Sometimes your enemies will elevate you. God uses them as a stepping stone to lift you up higher. When I was a young boy, uh, uh, actually in Albany, Arbor Hill, we had a stepping stool. And um, my mom, uh, she would put things on a higher uh, a level. And, 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 um, and, and if I was going to get it, I'd have to get that stool. Uh, I didn't buy the stool. I couldn't afford a stool. But to rise higher, I had to get on the stool. Mama and daddy provided the stool. I just had to climb. With regards to this, in this life, God wants to move you up higher. And you can't get higher unless there's a stool. Oftentimes, God sends an enemy to be the stool that raises you up higher. Uh, he brings an enemy there that you could stand on what they say when they curse you, when they treat you bad. It's something for you to stand up because he wants to bring you up higher. Oftentimes, adversity is what makes you rise up in the Lord and rise up. You see, and, and, and the higher he wants to bring you, the more enemies he's going to bring you away. Don't curse the enemy because they're about to elevate you to a higher level. Some of y'all got some Goliaths in your life. Some of y'all got some Judases in your life. Some of y'all got some troublemakers and gossipers in your life. And when they cut your, their eyes at you, when they slander you, when they step over you, ignore you, and lie about you, God is still raising you up higher, and you should go higher in praise, higher in worship, higher in service, higher in song. You just have to keep on keeping on. When the enemy attacks you, God's going to wrap his arms around you and pick you up and raise you to another level. And if it starts raining down judgment on you by friends, God has a way of just covering you and protecting you. When your friends uh, trip you up, God will catch you before you fall. When they try to push you down, he will pick you up and push you forward. He's about to uh, rise you up higher. And so your enemies will be your footstool. You see, everything under your feet is uh, uh, defeated by you in Christ Jesus. So some enemies are about to be under your foot. Don't curse the enemy because God is using them for your good. Some of us wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for adversity, if it wasn't for trouble, if it wasn't for hardship. And then you learn how to trust in God and he brought you through. But you have to keep on trusting in him and remembering his promise that he will take care of you. I dare you to look at your problem. And the one who's causing that problem and say, uh -uh, I love you. You mean it for evil, but God is going to work it out for my good. The Bible says all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. He's working it out for your good. He's working it out for your good. Sister Eunice, you watching. He's working it out 
for your good. Sister Harris, you, you watching. He, he's working it out for your good. Deacon Evans, you're watching. He's working it out for your good. Deacon Raj, you're watching. He's working it out for your good. In fact, you can rejoice now because it's already done. There is no time and space with him. He's eternally in the now. He's working it out right now. It is a message that you can share with someone else as well. They may be going through heartache, hard times, sickness, illness, rejection, depression. Share with them what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for good. We pray that you would. If you are unsaved, to confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, realizing that he died on the cross, that you might have the opportunity for eternal life. I say the opportunity because he died for all of your sins and my sins, and all you have to do is accept him as Savior. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's an easy decision because there's no other name under heaven by which man must be saved. Will you? Accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And it's promised that when you leave here, the very second you leave here, you shall open your eyes on the other side in paradise and be in the presence of the Savior forever. We spoke a couple weeks ago. And then we shall be like him. Then we shall see his face. Then we shall wear a crown. Amen. Come on, he's calling, he's beckoning. He's calling with his arms wide open. If you accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, we believe that you are saved. Amen. 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 God bless you. As a pastor once said, we have done what the Lord hath commanded, yet there is room. We want to again remind and we will continue to remind that on september 5th the first sunday in september we will be worshiping right here at the friendship baptist church i gotta tell you um we we have the one of the best uh pianists in 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 the state right here and i say one of the best because i don't want to get the other ones mad and I'm going to tell you something. This drummer is kicking too now. She's playing today. Amen. Amen. And when this group gets a CD, <laughs> amen. God bless you. God bless you, Friendship Baptist Church. Oh. Absolutely. And Nicole, that drummer is the best drummer in the Tri City District, Tri City area, isn't she? Tri State area. Amen. God bless you. We're going to rejoice. Gracious God, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for the gathering, the saints together. We thank you for the preached word. We thank you for the worship and song. We thank you for the prayer. We thank you for the scripture. We thank you for the lives and the service of those who are here today. We just want to say thank you, God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forever.
and everyone who loved the Lord said amen. Amen, somebody. meant to give God praise for all, every little thing he does. Blessings, they all come on, come on, come on. Praise him. Praise him. That's all I want to do. I just want to praise you forever and ever. I just can't stop praising you for everything you've done.